Well, hey there, I'm Emma from mm English. Today, we are going to practice saying 10 of the most common English words. Now, of course, I'll show you how to pronounce them correctly, but even better, how native speakers actually pronounce these words naturally when they speak. So this lesson is gonna help you to understand fast-talking native English speakers, but it will also help you to sound more relaxed as you begin to speak English fluently. But to do that, I need you to practice with me out loud. Can you do that? When I say the most common words in English, I'm talking about the ones that occur most frequently. And in English, these are function words, the words that exist to make our sentences grammatically correct. Articles, prepositions, pronouns, and even some really simple verbs that we use every day. Now, because they are so common and they're used so often, native English speakers use them quite quickly and very efficiently when we say them, which means that the pronunciation of a word that you learn from a dictionary or from your English teacher may not be exactly how it sounds when spoken at a natural pace by a native English speaker. Let's get started with at. Now, sometimes you will hear this word stressed, at. You need to be here at three o'clock. And by stressing at in that sentence, I'm adding emphasis. I'm making the meaning stronger. You need to be here exactly at three o'clock. Not before, not after, at three. But most of the time when you hear this word, it's unstressed, it's not stressed. And that strong vowel sound, a, reduces to a schwa. Uh, uh, uh. I'll meet you at the car, at the car, at the car. I'll meet you at the car. I'll pick you up at eight, at, at, at eight, up at eight. I'll pick you up at eight. The verb do conjugates, doesn't it? So it can be do or does, depending on the subject. What you need to remember is that when do is the main verb in our sentence, it's usually stressed. I do it often, do it. But as an auxiliary verb, it's helping the main verb in our sentence. And then it becomes a grammatical word. It usually reduces down. Do you wanna come? Dear, dear. Do you wanna come? Try it. If you're using does instead of do, it also reduces. Does becomes does, does. Does she need to see it? Does she? Does she need to see it? Your turn. Do you feel like your English speaking skills are holding you back? Others aren't really seeing you for who you really are. Anytime I had to talk with natives, I was just so unconfident because I was afraid of making mistakes all the time. Most of the time I read in English and I understand. I watch the videos with the subtitles, but in that moment to speak, I felt afraid. I feel shame. It's time to break free from those negative feelings and find your English voice with Hey Lady. We understand the challenges that women face on their English journey. And that's why we're growing a supportive community of women who are working towards the same goal, speaking English with confidence and ease. From when I joined to today is that chance to talk with people without fear of judgment. When we see each other, we're so happy and we have the opportunity to get to know new people all the time. I mean, it's really amazing. For me, it's really like a dream come true, actually. Join Hey Lady today and start living your best life in English. To find out more, look for the link down in the description below. As a pronoun, you can be stressed when we need to clarify who is doing something. I didn't ask you, I asked her. 
But we don't always emphasize you. Often you just hear it as y. Do you? Do you know? Do you know who did it? I'll meet you there. Meet ya. I'll meet you there. As can be stressed as well. I guess it didn't take as long as last time, but usually this is an unstressed word. So it sounds more like is, is. So again, we're using our schwa sound for that unstressed vowel sound. It wasn't as hard as I thought. As hard as, 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 as hard as. It wasn't as hard as I thought. Try it. Now, there is a pattern to look for here and more importantly, to listen for. And that is the way that words that start with a vowel sound often link to the last sound of the word before it when spoken naturally. And that link happens when there is a consonant sound at the end of that word. As starts with a vowel, so this is a perfect opportunity to highlight it for you. Wasn't as, hard as, it wasn't as hard as I thought. It wasn't as hard as I thought. Try it. Okay, so let's talk about grammatical words that start with the letter H. Like he, him, her, and even have and has. All of these words are often pronounced without the H sound when speaking quickly. Does he want to come? Does he? Does he? Does he want to come? I'll ask him if you want. Ask him. I'll ask him. But remember, if you are using this reduced form and you're not pronouncing the H, you must link the I to the word before it. I'll ask him if you want. Try it. I want to buy a car. Buy a. Buy a. Try it. Okay, let's try the verb have or has now. So just like the verb do, we conjugate have depending on the subject. Sometimes it's has. So when this is the main verb in a sentence, it's stressed. And both have and has use the a vowel sound. But just like the pronouns we talked about, sometimes native speakers will drop that H sound when speaking quickly. She has three dogs. She is. She is three. I have two. I have. I have. I have two. Now have is another one of these special verbs. It's an auxiliary verb. It is an auxiliary verb in all of the perfect tenses, which is why it is such a common word in English. Usually when it's the main verb in a sentence, it's stressed, but it's unstressed when it's an auxiliary verb in a perfect tense. And when it's spoken, we often use contractions. I have becomes I've. We have becomes we've. He has becomes he's. Now, it can be stressed when it's an auxiliary verb if we're trying to emphasize that something is true. I've been to India. <laughs> no, you haven't. I have. I have been to India. Oh, here's a good one. Grammatically, but is used in several different ways and it can be stressed. So when it's stressed, it's pronounced but, uh, uh, but, but. I'll help you, but I need a favor first. More often than not, but is usually unstressed and the pronunciation changes. So instead of but, it becomes but. But I don't want to. But I. But I. But I don't want to. Try it. They ate it, but they didn't like it. But. 
but they, but they, but they didn't like it. They ate it, but they didn't like it. Now, well, it's unusual to hear this word stressed unless you're referring to the number four. Four is usually unstressed, and again, it's that vowel sound that reduces to the schwa. Instead of four, you hear f, f, f. And in my accent, you don't hear the pronunciation of that final R. The ending is just the vowel sound. F. I bought this apple for you. For you. For you. I bought this apple for you. Can you get one for me? For me? Can you get one for me? Try it. Of is almost always unstressed. Instead of saying o, oh, of, reduce or relax that vowel sound down to a schwa. Uh, uh, of, of, of. Would you like a cup of tea? Of, cup of, cup of tea. Would you like a cup of tea? Do you notice how that consonant sound at the end of cup links to of and that vowel sound? Cup of, cup of. Would you like a cup of tea? Of course, how could we forget it? 99% of the time when you hear it being spoken in English, it's unstressed. So when I just said it, then I was stressing it, emphasizing it so you knew which word I was talking about. But it doesn't usually sound like this. It usually sounds like it, it. again, that schwa sound. You've got to relax. You've got to get into this sound and relax with me. It, 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 it. And usually we use a stop T at the end here, so the air is not released. It, it, it. Instead of it, it. We catch the air so that we can move quickly onto the next sound. So you will often just hear it being pronounced as it, it, it. You should be able to say it quite quickly when you don't have to release the air. I want it now. It, I want it. I want it. I want it now. Get it out of the car. It, it, get it out. Get it out. Get it out of the car. Goodness, there are lots of reductions and linking happening in that sentence, aren't there? Get it out of the car. Understanding how these really common English words actually sound when they're spoken in natural English is really important. To understand native speakers when they're talking fast, they're talking quickly, you need to know how these sounds reduce down and they link together when spoken. So I'm super glad that you hung around to watch this lesson all the way through. Make sure you bookmark this video or you save the playlist because you need to come back and review it with me a few times. Keep coming back to practice with me again and again. Now, I have another video just like this one coming out soon with 10 more common English words so that we can practice their natural pronunciation together. So make sure you subscribe, you come back and check out the next video. But in the meantime, if you want to learn more about linking and naturally spoken English, check out this series right here that I made for my students. You are absolutely going to love it. I'll see you in there.